Shalom and welcome. I'm Miles Weiss, and my special guest today is Avi Lipkin. Avi is a former IDF spokesman. He is the founder of the Bible Block Party, which is attempting to build a Jewish Christian coalition for the Knesset. He is a world-renowned expert on Islam and has been our guest here in the Bay Area and around the world in Dallas and all over the country as he has been speaking about the danger of Islam, the reality of Islam, and trying to awaken Jews and Christians to the reality of what the Quran actually teaches. I want to start today by speaking about the uh, uh, reality that last week or so recently, Ban Ki-moon, General Secretary of the United Nations, said to all of our surprise, it's possible, perhaps, maybe, that the United Nations may be prejudiced against Israel. Can you address that issue? Well, absolutely. The United Nations uh, indeed uh, recognized the Jewish state in 1947. It was the 29th of November. There was a plan for a Palestinian state and a plan for a Jewish state one next to the other. Uh, the Arabs rejected it. Uh, uh, even before the independence of Israel, May 15, 1948, uh, seven Arab armies invaded Israel in addition to the Arab irregulars who were there, and there was no way that the Arabs would tolerate a Jewish infidel state in the middle of the Middle East. And it's been like that ever since. And one last thing I want to say is that all the most horrible regimes in the world who are guilty of human rights violations, they get away with it. But Israel builds 100 homes in one of the neighborhoods of Jerusalem, and the UN and the world, everyone jumps on Israel. It's incredible. Most people don't know. I don't think our, our viewers even know that originally Israel was Israel and Palestine for the Arabs was Jordan. Correct. And that uh, I, our friend Walid Shabbat, he said, I went to sleep uh, I went to sleep a Jordanian and woke up a Palestinian. Yeah. Explain that to our viewers, please. Well, indeed, uh, we have to go back to World War I. Uh, Chaim Weizmann uh, developed a special type of artificial dynamite, which the British could not defeat the Germans in World War I without that invention. And then, as a result, uh, as a gift to Chaim Weizmann, the, the, the crown in London said, we will allow you to have a Jewish state. It's called the Balfour Declaration. Yes. And at that time, uh, with the termination of the Ottoman Empire, uh, Israel that was promised to the Jews was Israel and Jordan of today. Mm. Then in 1922, if you remember Lawrence of Arabia, the movie, uh, the British cut off two-thirds of the land, which is the land to the east of the Jordan River, and gave it to King Abdullah mm -hmm. because they wanted to get Abdullah out of Saudi Arabia and now the House of Saud to take over in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. And the House of Abdullah, which the Hashemites, which are Arabians, they're not Jordanians, mm. implanted them by force on the local population there. Um, so that was 1922. So immediately the U UN, or the League of Nations at that time, cut off two-thirds of the land. Yep. And then in 1947, the UN cut off another two-thirds of what was left. So Israel that we know, the Jewish Israel of 1948, uh, was basically one-sixth of the territory that the British government had promised the Jews in the Balfour Declaration. Mm, it's amazing. Many of our viewers are Bible believers. They, I don't think they understand that the original promise to Abraham is much bigger than what we see today in the little strip of land that Israel has. And I believe we will see the borders of Deuteronomy 11, uh, maybe not tomorrow, but very soon, mm. as the Arab Spring causes the desolation of all of these Arab countries, mm. uh, and the population there flees from these civil wars, mm. and, or they're starving. And where do they go? they go? They will come to America, but the Middle East will empty out. And I predict the Israeli borders will expand. Wow. There's uh, the Psalm 83 war that people are predicting that there is going to be a, a conflict with the surrounding nations that Israel will prevail in. Uh, that will be part of that expansion. Yes, I, I believe in this. Uh, I believe that uh, what we will be seeing is, uh, I think I, I go to church too much. Uh, <laughs> we will be seeing two wars, and it's not the Armageddon War right no. now. It's, it's, I think, called the Psalm 83 War. Mm -hmm. uh, the Armageddon War, I think, will come later yes. as a result of the second circle of countries, which is uh, Iran and uh, Turkey. What we're facing today is a war, I believe, imminent war with Iran, that Israel will do something in Iran, America will do something in Syria, because mm -hmm. Syria and Iran are allies, they're Shiites, and the Sunnis are basically dictating to the U.S., and the U.S. is dictating to Israel. We see a temporary alliance of Jews, Christians, and Sunni Muslims mm -hmm. against the Shiites. Shiites, but the only problem with that is that the Shiites are the ones who are defending the Christians, and the Sunnis are going to try to kill 14 million Christians in the Middle East. We need to slow that down, because yeah. you just gave us an incredible thumbnail history yeah. of, of 
Islam, the factions within Islam, and I think our viewers need to understand. Let's move to Egypt because really that's a pretty prime example of what's going wrong in the Middle East. And we know that your wife, Rachel, I know she's well, she is an Egyptian Jew by birth, and she is an interpreter of the Arabic media. I don't know if you know this, but Rachel listens to the Arabic media over and over again in order to tell the Israelis what's actually being going on in that media. Because I don't know if you know this, but we hear one thing in the West, and we hear another thing spoken one to another in the Arabic language. So tell us about the mess in Egypt and what's currently going on there. Okay. Uh, you'll forgive me, but I think one thing that should be mentioned is that Please. in my first book, is Fanatic Islam a Global Threat, well, which is carried by this ministry. Read it many years ago. And this ministry has sold thousands of yeah. this book. Uh, I talk very, very uh, carefully, and but very uh, clearly about the role of Egypt in the end times and where we are now. And I talk about the Egyptian military and the role of Mubarak. Wow. And uh, uh, things that were uh, spoken of in 1997 when I wrote the book, they're happening right now. And so mm -hmm. I would uh, recommend to people watching this program uh, to get that first book because it also already explains what's happening in Egypt. I don't want you to miss this. The fact is he would not call himself a prophet. I certainly won't either. I don't want to insult Hosea and Habakkuk. However, Avi did speak about these things many, many years ago. And in fact, they are true. They're coming true right now in our day. So tell us what, what we're seeing now in Egypt. Okay, well, uh, what firstly we're seeing is God's word being fulfilled. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if I had said this before February 2011, mm -hmm. if I had said this three years ago, mm -hmm. uh, you know, look at Isaiah 19, verses 1 and 2. Right. And it says, Egyptian will fight Egyptian. Right. Brother will fight brother. City will fight city. Neighbor will fight neighbor. And what you're talking about basically is the self-destruction of Egypt. Yeah. Uh, and in Ezekiel 28, 29, it, it doesn't say that the Egyptians are all going to be killed. It says they're going to be scattered mm -hmm. to the four corners of the earth. Wow. That the, Egypt will be a desolation for 40 years. That no animal or human will trod in the Nile Valley from the Aswan mm -hmm. Dam. Yes. This is Aswan. Yes. Sain is Aswan. Right. Down to Migdol on the Mediterranean. So that is now in the process of happening. But what it has happened, and we see it continuing to happen, is a civil war in Egypt yes. between those who are more Muslim and those who are less Muslim. And of course, the Christians in Egypt mm. are caught in the middle between mm. this. And we have to pray. We have to pray for the Christians of Egypt. The Jews are gone. The Saturday people are gone. Now they're right. coming for the Sunday people, wow. the Christians. That is true. And uh, th this is what I believe is going to cause the collapse of the Egyptian economy. Because once you, God forbid, get rid of the Christians. I hope... Egypt doesn't get rid of them, but right. the Islamic way is either convert, die, or leave. Exactly. And uh, when, if and when the Christians no longer exist in Egypt, it will be the collapse of the Egyptian economy. And then you're going to have 80 million Muslims in Egypt starving. I believe they're going to come to America. That's the, where my next thought was. You know, years ago, I met a man, uh, a Coptic priest in Argentina. He is the one who started the cave church outside of Cairo. He works with the poor Christians in Cairo in the garbage dumps. And he's built this wonderful work serving the poor. Uh, Father Saman, and I've wondered, you know, how is he going to survive? What about all these people that he's led to the Lord? What will happen to these Christians? And it's already begun where they're just wiping out. I think 50 churches were burned recently. It's yes. just an incredible decimation of the Christian population. Yes, there. well, indeed, uh, again, in my first book, as well as all of my books, I talk about the Dallas Council on World Affairs. Mm. Uh, in April of 1991, I came to Dallas to speak before the Council on Foreign Relations. It was a mistake that they invited me. They thought they were getting the chief of staff of the Israeli army. They said A. Lipkin, Amnon Lipkin Shahak, who was at that time uh, chief of staff of the Israeli army. You're a Lipkin. And I, so they said, aren't you, aren't you General A. Lipkin? I said, no, I'm Lieutenant A. Lipkin of the <laughs> army spokesman's office. And I was actually a pinch hitter for whom? For Boris Yeltsin, who got drunk. <laughs> they had to put him on a plane and said, so God, the Lord in heaven had to make Boris Yeltsin so drunk that they would bring who the Dallas people thought was chief of staff of the Israeli army. Anyway, but that's how God works. God is very funny. Anyway, so I, and I explained to them things that are in the news today. Can Israel, God forbid, can Israel be pushed back to the borders of June the 5th, 67? I believe not. Mm. But that's what the U.S. government has been trying to do since 1971. It's not Obama. It's all of the presidents right. and all the administrations, Democratic and Republican. And what they said to me at that meeting was what made America great was the barrel of oil. Mm. The steady price of oil, the steady supply of oil. And my Christian friends who were with me that night, my guardian angels, one of them got up and said, you should be ashamed of yourselves. You said what made America great was the barrel of oil. What made America great was Jesus Christ. Wow. And then the lights went on for me. 
and I understood that America would either be Christian or anti-Christian. It wow. can't be in the middle. And it, America, unfortunately, Washington has been anti-Christian for decades. I don't know if our viewers know that, that the State Department holds the reins of power behind the scenes. Presidents come and go, but the State Department has been anti-Zionist, anti-Israel, and anti-Christian for many, many years. Okay, so what am I saying? I'm saying that six million Jews died in World War II mm. because the Arabs were dictating to the State Department that if America would give them visas and let them out, that the Arabs would go over to Hitler. After that, it was the communist Cold War. This, the, and indeed, Abdel Nasser was pro-Soviet. Right. Um, in the last few years, the last 20 years, we've seen the, the, the holocaust of millions of black people in Africa. Right. And the world never said anything right. uh, because the Arabs are doing it. So if the Muslims are doing it, it's okay. Wow. And now, and this is what breaks my heart, we're talking about the termination, God forbid, of Christianity mm -hmm. in Egypt, Syria, Lebanon, and, and Iraq. We're talking about a holocaust of 14, 15 million Christians right. in the Middle East. And Americans are not aware that right. this is happening. That's right. why this important, this program is so important and this ministry is so important. Right. And I think that the, uh, the current realm of, of political correctness in our nation is so, it's got such a grip on us that we can't even have an opinion about Islam without f facing the ire of political forces, media forces. It's incredible. And yet you continue to speak the truth. You know, I have to tell you, um, I've been in the churches now for 25 years. I've been over a thousand churches. And I always quote Alexis de Tocqueville. Alexis de Tocqueville wrote a book in 1840. It was two books, but it was really one book combined. Uh, it's called Democracy in America. Mm -hmm. You can summarize the books by saying, that if America will be the greatest country on the face of the earth because the American people are good people and their pulpits, their Christian pulpits, are on fire for the Lord. Wow. And conversely, when America's pulpits mm. will no longer be on fire for the Lord, America loses its preeminence. And what's the problem in America today? The U.S. government today, the agenda today, is saying if you're a Christian, you're a terrorist. Right. And if you're a Bible fundamentalist believer, you're mentally insane. Exactly so. I so, hope you're hearing this. Because just, just yesterday, our young cameraman told me, where are the pulpits? Where are the voices that made this country great? Where are the people in the pulpits telling the truth? And we are losing our ability to speak forth the truth in the pulpits in America. And that is what made America strong. That is what kept us online. And if we don't get that back ASAP very quickly, we're going to be in way deep trouble. I believe that history is like a pendulum. It swings to the left and then it returns to the right. And I'm an optimist. I know that there are Christians out there who say America's doomed and America's damned and America's lost, and I don't agree with that. I believe there can be, there must be a Christian revival. And because I'm a Jew, I can say, yeah, Southern Baptists, even the Northern Baptists, <laughs> you know, Catholics, Protestants, all denominations. Mm -hmm. There has to be a Christian revival in all the churches, and the Christians have to band together and re restore this country, the United States of America, to its great past. With one of your books, Christian Revival for America's Survival. That's yes. my, my second book. And what I explained there, indeed, as a result of the Dallas Council on World Affairs, is that what we are seeing is we are seeing the decrease in the Jewish population, the increase of the Muslim population. Jews are like five, six million today mm -hmm. in America. And Muslims are like 20, 30 million today, and it's stealth. Nobody knows. Mm. And so if the Christians don't wake up, Israel will be sacrificed for a barrel of oil. We're going to close this segment. I want you to know that you're hearing something you will not hear elsewhere. This is wonderful news for you. It gives you things to pray about. It gives you things to talk to your pastor about. It gives you things to inform your family about. I want to encourage you to get all these books. Keep watching our program. We intend to bring you more programs like this. We'll be back with you soon. And I want to pick up some more about Egypt, Syria, what's going on in the Middle East and Israel with our guest, Avi Lipkin. We'll see you soon.